going to draw our conclusions basically on how they performed during the interviews and also the uh, live TV debates. So let's start with Ward 1, Mike. Who do we have in Ward 1? Well, I think, personally, I think we can eliminate Newman and Turkle. Turkle, because he hasn't been that visible or uh, he, hasn't, he wasn't even at the debate, and Newman, because uh, he's not that experienced in politics, Maybe in the future he'll do okay, but at this moment, I think we can leave him out too. So you're going with Steve Butland and who else? Uh, Christian, uh, Crowell, Martins. Oh, they're all in there, and I can make it comments if you want. <laughs> uh, as far as Andy goes, Andy Martins, he was the only one that made that referred to the water problem that mm -hmm. Ward 1 is having. And I think a lot of people will like that, and I think he'll gain a lot of votes for that. But I don't think he'll manage to get the votes, the votes to, to win. overtake uh, Butlin, definitely, and Christian. I think uh, Butlin's a shoo-in. I think he's always a shoo-in. Um, I think Christian, because this is his first term, has the target on his back, and I think he's the one who may lose his seat to Andy Martins. Uh, I think and this is, I think, Andy's third attempt at uh, at that seat. I think he's come across this time uh, a lot more passionate about the uh, the water issue, and I think he um, he's just someone who's very interested in municipal politics. Mm -hmm. I think he's proven that, and I think uh, he may get a shot this time. So I'm going to go with Butland and Martins. Well, uh, I got to make a comment on Derek Crowell. He, uh, when I interviewed him, he, he knew the facts, he knew the issues, and uh, he likes the EDC, which might not be that popular <laughs> an issue, but uh, he, he backs the EDC because he's a business person, and he showed a lot of confidence, but... I think I'm going to go with Butlin and Christian because Christian, he's definitely, he definitely knows the issues and he, he has a lot of confidence, but like you say, he's got that target. I think the back. water issue is going to be a, a big thing for Ward 1 and that's why I'm going, that someone's got to pay that price and I think it's going mm -hmm. to be uh, Paul Christian. Moving on to Ward 2, we have two incumbents, strong incumbents, uh, Terry Sheenan and uh, Susan Myers. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of young blood in World War II running. Um, John Duke um, certainly is uh, worthy of a candidate. Um, I just don't know if he has the enough of support out there to knock off Sheen and uh, Myers. Um, but I think out of all the candidates, he's the one capable of doing it. Yeah, he's, he's not well known enough yet. Uh, but he's another one like, like Crowell. He, he, was, he was confident. He's... He's a business person, and more than one, <laughs> and uh, he knows the issues, the facts, and and possibly the remedies for those issues. Uh, but I have to agree with you. Uh, it's going to be hard to unseat Myers and Sheehan. As far as Solvers goes, no chance. Yeah, I didn't see uh, him uh, performing that well at the uh, debates and mm -hmm. really haven't heard a lot of his campaign uh, other than the uh, debates, which I have to say that I find is really surprising with a lot of candidates that they didn't get their message out. And that's part of what I'm basing my decision on is mm -hmm. did they get their message out? And um, a lot of them didn't. So let's move on to Ward 3. Ward 3 okay. is an open uh, ward. Uh, there's definitely going to be two new faces on that ward with uh, Pat Mick uh, not uh, going uh, for re-election. And um, a lot of people running in Ward 3. Yeah, we have Tim Tebow, mm -hmm. uh, Matthew Shoemaker, David Pollock, Luke McMichael, and Judy Hoopinen. Mm -hmm. I think... Uh, Mr. Tebow, he likes marijuana. He wants to see it legalized. And I think because our community is 
a seniors community, if I might use that term, uh, I think that's going to hurt them. Uh, well, I think any time you support marijuana, which is currently legal, mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be a good thing. Okay. Um, not to say that uh, I totally disagree with his thinking. Um, if it is legal, <laughs> if it is legal, it could create a lot of jobs and a lot of tax revenue. And mm -hmm. I think that's where he's going with yeah. it. But I think it's still a, a couple of years away before we can do that. Um, that said, though, I like Tebow because he's a character, and mm -hmm. I think council needs a, a character, at least one character like that, right? Uh, I don't think he's strong enough a candidate to win. Um, I think I'm going to put um, my money on Dave Pollock and uh, Matt Shoemaker. Matt Shoemaker has really come across as really knowing the issues. He's well-spoken, and uh, for a young person, he's very intelligent uh, about municipal politics, and I think he is, pardon the pun, a shoe-in okay. for Shoe Ward 3. Yeah, Shoemaker impressed me, too. The, the way I see Shoemaker, he's a lawyer, and even just to go in and write your test to be a lawyer or a doctor, you have to have it up here. Yeah. And he he has it up here. He's an intelligent, and he, like you said, he knows the issues, and uh, he's energetic, mm -hmm. and he wants to work on mm -hmm. council. Uh Hoopinen, Judy Hoopinen, she hasn't been as visible as she should have been. No. And uh, McMichael, he ran be and pre before previously. in a couple of elections, yeah. and um, kind of surprised that he's laid low yeah. in this uh, campaign. Mm -hmm. He really hasn't got his message out at all, and um, even at the debates, he wasn't really all that effective. I I think. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I think I'm going to go with uh, Pollock because uh, I think he's got a lot of support just because of his town hall. Uh, meetings, as yeah. well as his rate pairs association. Um, I think that's going to play into the cards this time. And uh, it, like I say, it's an open ward. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be two new faces, and I think those are the two new faces. Yeah, he's, he's dealt with City Hall before. Exactly. He he's got that inner, experience. He, yeah, he knows the inner workings of City Hall, so yeah. that, that's an advantage. I have to agree with you. But I, and let's call number one. Who do you think? Shoemaker? I think Shoemaker's going to win the award. Yeah. I think uh, Pollock will come in second, mm -hmm. and uh, the rest will share the rest of the votes. But um, I think Matt Shoemaker is definitely uh, okay. in for Ward 3. Moving on to Ward 4, which is a, a very uh, tough ward because it deals with the downtown, and uh, we have some candidates in there, again, that are previous uh, councillors who are trying to get their seat back uh, with Lorena Tridico. I, again, I don't think Lorena, as much as I think she was very effective as a uh, counselor when she was on term, didn't get her message across this time. And um, I think that's going to hurt her. And I, and I have to agree with you. The last time she was on council, she... She was very she, effective. Yeah, she worked. She worked hard mm -hmm. for her... Uh, it was very effort. unfortunate that she lost the yeah. seat. Yeah. But um, I think just because there's so many strong candidates in Ward 4 that um, she probably won't get it back this year. I'm going to go and put my money on Dufour. Mm -hmm. um, just because he's a fresh face, he really seems to know municipal politics. And I think he's pressing the right buttons mm -hmm. with those uh, voters. Yeah, when I interviewed him, he, he impressed me. It really, really impressed me. And uh, judging from uh, the hits, he... He's, He's got was, a lot of support. Yeah, he was uh, top. Uh, he was the top of the list for hits in, in all the interviews. Uh, I think Turco. He's a shoo-in because of his visibility to the community, mm. and when they go in the booth, they're going to see him, and that helps too. Where you're listed on on uh, on the voting card. Sure. And if you're at the top of the list, people usually mark that one. Yeah. And uh, but like you, know, we, you were talking about a target, I think this in this ward, Rick Nero has a target. A target. On his back. Yeah. yeah. And and I agree with you, Luke Dufour does have a really good chance of winning a seat, and if he does, it's going to be at Rick Nero's expense. I think so too. Uh, again, just because even though Rick Nero is a former councillor in that ward. Uh, this is, again, his first time back on the council, so he's got the target. And, um, again, I'm going to go with Turco just because Turco gets in all the time and because he's got the name. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go with Dufour uh, for his ward mate. Yeah, and I agree. But at the same 
at the same time, we we have, I have to say that Rick Nero has done a good job, a good job. in the past. Yep. Uh, I there's nothing wrong with Rick mm -hmm. Nero. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, moving on to Ward Five, uh, probably one of the weakest um, ward races going because there's only three candidates. One of them are is a former councillor trying to get back in, and the incumbents are Frank Vada and Marshy Bruni. I think those two work well together. I think they've proven that on council that they work well together. There was some bad blood between Shaletti and, and Fada. And um, I think, I don't know if it's gonna actually hurt Fada or not, coming out what he said at the debates. Yeah. Um, but that said, I think people just like to have harmony in the ward. So I think the, it's Fada and uh, Bruni. Yeah, but if, if Shaletti gets in with Bruni, they can get along. It's just it's uh, Chaletti and Fada. and Fada that can't get along. So you can look at it that way, too. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. I think uh, Frank Fada and Br uh, Bruni, because they they came right out and said at the debate that the last four years, they worked well together mm -hmm. and got a lot done. Mm -hmm. Without any, and there wasn't any backfighting, yeah. and ESPN didn't come into the picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, moving on to Ward Six okay. uh, before we run out of time. Uh, Ward Six in a very interesting race there because uh, legend Frank Manzo is not running, so that uh, makes a wide open uh, gap in Ward Six, and we got some credible candidates there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm really impressed with Ross Romano. Uh, for the same reason, as I mentioned, for Shoemaker. Uh, Ross is a, a lawyer. I, I interviewed him, and, and he's well-spoken. He knows the issues. He knows... He stands behind his ward, and he wants to work for them. Uh, and I think uh, Ward 6 would would be advisable to vote for him because he, he does know the law, uh, and, and civic uh, policies and p provincial and federal, and he can help not only the ward but the city by being on council. Uh, then you you take Demansky. He's an environmentalist, and I, I think what will help him is that he is dead set against the Avery uh, Point. Development, uh, yeah. Yeah, and he knows uh, remedies to our uh, brown water situation, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that might help him. But Joe Krompetich has done a good job uh, uh, in his first term, and uh, those are the three that ha have a chance as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Wanda McQueen, even though she's been on... Uh, school board for many years. She's a good lady. She's well-spoken, but I don't think she's well-known enough for the voters of Ward 6 to, to vote her in. Uh, uh, Grandin Eddy? Uh, That's a wild card there with Grandin Eddy. I'm not sure. I mean, he's a former counselor, so he's got that experience. I don't know because of his stance with the with the uh, development at, at point, it may work against him. Yeah, uh, a lot of people don't want that development. Who live in Ward Six, he does. Um, I understand why he wants that development, uh, but and I also understand. I also understand why people don't want it. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. I think it's going to hurt him in the long run. I think Joe uh, is going to get another term. And I think I agree with you, with Ross uh, Romano moving in as a new face for Ward 6. I, I think Ward 6 is going to end up being like that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. But I think uh, Demansky and Krompetich, being two Polish people, <laughs> are going to run neck and neck. And I think, I think Romano is going to take the ward. Over Joe? Yeah. 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 They're all well known. I guess we'll just have to wait. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the big race. <laughs> this is for, this is for supper, eh? Right? At Boston's. Pizza? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we're into the big race. This is the race for mayor, of course, and this is Debbie's second term that she's uh, trying to get. 
And um, I personally think she's going to get it uh, by a hair, and I'll tell you why. But um, mm. let's go with you first. Okay. Um, it's I, I've all I've already said that it's a, a two person race. Uh, Cook, Cool, uh, and Williams non-existent. Didn't get their message out no, at all. No. Ted Johnson is up there, but uh, everybody knows Debbie, and everybody knows uh, Provenzano, and they're the two that are going to be neck and neck at the top. And I'm going to give you my prediction right off the bat. And the reason why Provenzano is going to beat Debbie is because he made it a point to say that Debbie took credit for the deep sea harbor uh, thing that we, we just got, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I call Provenzano's Provenzano to win by 200 votes. What I'm really surprised about Debbie is that she didn't really get her message out. I mean, she didn't really send out a lot of releases. She didn't really hold a lot of uh, town hall meetings um, for her re-election. I think she's uh, going to get in, though, because she's uh, less of, a, of an evil. Um, <laughs> you know, because people know who she is, and she knows that people know uh, they're probably safe with Debbie. What I think is going to happen, though, is Ted Johnson, who's actually uh, gained a lot of credibility as a candidate in the last couple of weeks, uh, especially since the debates, um, I think he's going to steal votes away from Christian Provenzano. Uh, that's going to hurt Christian Provenzano, and I think Debbie is going to squeak in with a, with a win just because of that. Hmm. I have to disagree. You have to disagree. Yeah. So you're, call, you're calling for Debbie. No, I'm no, calling for... No, for Provenzano, I'm calling for Debbie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that said, I have to uh, congratulate all the candidates who put their name in for election, whether it be for mayor or ward uh, councillor. It takes a lot of guts to do that, and you're out in the public, and, um, you know, you're a target, really, with the public. And so kudos to all the people putting their names in. But again, there can only be one winner or two winners in, in the council race. So that's our predictions. Let's see how good we get. Um, I'm hoping you're going to buy dinner. Oh, no, I don't so. No. <laughs> Guess we'll find out tomorrow night. <laughs> tomorrow is election day, so uh, we encourage you to uh, go exercise your franchise, cast your vote, and uh, get the best person. Bye. Thanks for joining us.